Today I'm going to give a brief overview of kinematics, um, the definitions of distance, displacement, speed, velocity, uh, acceleration, and the four equations of constant acceleration. So starting off, kinematics itself um, specializes in describing how an object moves. We're not focused on the why yet, we're just looking to come up with all the different ways that motion can be described. So qualitatively, using descriptive words like speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, uh, moving at a constant speed. There are quantitative descriptions where you can just write a mathematical equation to describe the motion, or uh, you could collect some data on an object's motion and put it in a graph. So uh, we'll be touching on all of those. Um, first, we've just got a few definitions. So position, it's pretty much a location with respect to some reference point. So for example, Liberty High School is at 15250 Rolliter Road. Uh, you could have a point on a number line at x equals 5. You could have an ordered pair located at 2 comma 7. Okay? When an object moves, it's going to travel a certain distance. That's going to be the total length that it travels. Displacement is something that we frequently talk about in physics, and that's a change in position. Now, that sounds very similar to distance but it is a little bit different. Um, displacement can be represented by delta x, right? The, letter, the Greek letter delta means change in, uh, and position is generally represented by the letter x, sometimes the letter y. Mathematically, displacement is uh, final minus initial, right? Because that's what the change in anything is, it's final minus initial. Um, so what we find is, well, let's have this little scenario. Let's say uh, I start at home. I'm going to swing by a Starbucks before I get to work. And I've got the, the distances laid out, the positions laid out right there. So from home, I go to Starbucks and I go to work. So the total distance that I have traveled, well, I traveled nine miles to the east and then one mile to the west. So the total amount of mileage I put on my odometer in my car uh, is 10 miles. Using the definition of displacement, though, okay, my displacement from my house to school was only 8 miles. Okay, I ended up 8 miles to the east of where I started. And that's kind of the tricky thing about displacement. Displacement only cares about your starting point and your ending point. Hey, I could have taken a trip to Florida in the middle of that, but as long as I ended up at work, my displacement would still have been eight miles to the east. Um, the quantities for distance and displacement are kind of fall into different categories. Distance is what's known as a scalar. It's just a value. So some examples of scalars, mass is 20 kilograms. The temperature outside was a much cooler 100 degrees today. Um, the distance from, you know, me to the other end of the hallway is 50 meters, okay? Displacement is what's known as a vector quantity. Any vector has both a magnitude and a direction, and magnitude just means a size, okay? Vectors can be represented with arrows, kind of like what's shown over there, um, and vectors are subject to what's known as vector addition, Okay. You add the vectors tip to tail, which is kind of what I did when I drew my pathway from the house to Starbucks, right? And then I do that arrow going backwards, so like the, the tail went from Starbucks to school, right? So it's kind of like a, a pirate treasure map, okay? So drawing those vectors tip to tail, and then you add them together. So that was a one-dimensional case uh, with the Starbucks story. If we have... Let's just say, you know, we're no longer limited to only going east and west, and now we're going north and then east, okay? If I drive 12 miles north and then 5 miles east, okay, the resultant vector, okay, or my displacement vector, is going to start at the start and end at the end. It's the hypotenuse of that right triangle, okay, which is going to be 13 miles, using Pythagorean theorem, or a Pythagorean triple. Um, you can be very specific with the direction here. Um, you, you could say northeast, but if you wanted a particular bearing, you could do trig in order to figure out the angle. 
So for example, I can use tangent here because uh, I was given my opposite and adjacent. And then I just do uh, arc tangent to find that my angle is 23 degrees east of north. So that was all about distance and displacement. So let's talk about speed and velocity. Uh, in everyday language, speed and velocity are kind of interchangeable, which as long as you're talking about instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity, yeah, you'd be right. Velocity would technically um, have a direction associated, but if you're talking about the magnitude of the velocity, you can kind of leave the direction off and just look at the, the numerical part okay, of that vector. Things get tricky when you're talking about averages, which sounds dumb, but people mess this up all the time. So average speed is distance over time. Average velocity is displacement over time. Okay, so in green right there, those are the pitfalls. Okay, when people look at average velocity, they get distracted by what's in the middle, right? You can only look at the starting position and the ending position and the time it took in between those two spots. Okay, it does not matter if it went all the way around the world. If you ended up back where you started, then your average velocity is going to be zero. Okay, uh, the tricky thing with speed, it's kind of a gotcha. If your object ever goes backwards, you have to take into account that extra distance, okay? And you have to factor that in before you do that calculation. Another tricky thing about averages is if, you, uh, if you're driving like two different speeds or you're traveling two different speeds. So take a look at this example. Uh, this is definitely not real life. I would never go this fast. I drive 100 miles per hour for 10 hours and 50 miles per hour for one hour. The average of 100 miles per hour and 50 miles per hour is 75, so my average speed is 75 miles per hour. Sweet, I'm done. Woo. No, that is incorrect. Okay? I drove at 100 miles per hour for much, much longer than I drove at 50 miles per hour. Okay? I have to figure out the total time where I was traveling, and I have to figure out the total distance or total displacement that I traveled. So in this scenario, I traveled for 11 hours straight and a total of 1,050 miles. Okay, take that distance, divide it by 11 hours. My average speed was 95 miles per hour. This makes sense, right? I drove at 100 miles per hour for much, much longer than I drove at 50 miles per hour. So having a number that high eh, seems pretty reasonable uh, when you think about it kind of logically. Um, here's an example for you to try. I drive at 20 miles per hour for 20 miles, then 30 miles per hour for another 20 miles. What is my average speed? Okay, here's a hint. Figure out the total duration. Okay, go ahead and pause the video for a moment. Work that out. And when you're ready, you can hit play. Crunching the numbers, you should get 24 miles per hour. We're going pretty fast, which brings us right into our topic of acceleration. Uh, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity, kind of like how velocity is defined as the rate of change of position. Same sort of deal. Um, the tricky thing about acceleration is, well, tricky. It kind of gets lumped in with all the other vectors. A change in direction absolutely counts as a change in the vector. So if an object is turning, it is accelerating for sure. Um, something that people get super confused on, they, they always think that positive acceleration means speeding up, negative acceleration means slowing down. That is not always the case. Okay? Mathematically, you kind of have to think about it on a number line or, or just like purely numerically, a positive acceleration means that your velocity is becoming more positive, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean you are speeding up. Obviously, in this first example, I was at one meter per second and then I'm at 10 meters per second. Well, 10 is a more positive number than one, okay? My speed has increased. In the second example, I start with a velocity of negative 10, I end with a velocity of negative 2, 
Well, the negative sign just means we're going to the left or going south or going in the opposite direction as however the positive direction is defined. Um, but two is a slower speed than 10, okay? But literally negative two is a bigger number. It's a more positive number. I like that better. It's a more positive number than negative 10, okay? So essentially, the long story short, if your acceleration matches the sign of the velocity, it's gonna speed up. If your acceleration mismatches the sign on velocity, it is going to slow down. Um, the equation for acceleration, as I mentioned earlier, it's defined as the rate of change of velocity. So change in V over the time interval. Rearranging that, um, one of the equations that we use very frequently is the V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. And this is one of the big four equations of constant acceleration, also known as the kinematic equations. Um, you can do a lot with this just to describe and predict the motion of an object. Um, there's five variables total, right, in all of these equations, and each equation has four of them, okay? So, um... Sometimes it's easier to, to pick the equation that doesn't have the variable that you don't care about. Um, one caveat to using these uh, is that acceleration does need to be constant. So if you've got an object that's got a funky acceleration function to go along with it, these equations wouldn't be, wouldn't be viable and you'd have to use another method um, to solve. So uh, the top three equations are on the AP physics formula chart. Uh, this last equation, it's very cute. It's very clever. It's the uh, average velocity formula kind of uh, written out. So the one-half V plus V naught is average velocity if and only if your acceleration is constant. Okay, You don't have to know what the acceleration is to use this formula, um, but you do need to know how long it's traveling at that particular average velocity uh, in order to figure out how far it's gone. Um, yes, and I call these the kinematic equations for short because the four equations of constant acceleration is certainly a mouthful. I've got just one more sample problem for y'all. Again, with the driving. Um, we're driving along, a gazelle crosses the road, okay? You have to stop because we don't harm gazelles in this class. Um, sometimes you will see the word decelerate. I don't, I don't love that word. It's not a super clear word most of the time, right? Mostly people mean it to, to say that the object is slowing down, okay? Again, it kind of uh, gets people confused. People think, oh, deceleration means negative acceleration. Ooh, that's not always the case, right? Deceleration means slowing down. I think if you literally think if you literally write it slows down, you'll know then your that your acceleration must have a sign that is opposite okay, the initial velocity. So here are the parts, parts A, B, and C. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and work this out. All right, I hope you worked this out. Real quick math, I got a stopping distance of 20.57 meters. Um, my speed halfway through that time is 8.49 meters per second. And the total time it takes me to stop is 3.42 seconds.